This is the Reptile Information Review. It's a brand new channel that we've started to cover some of the information that you'll find about keeping reptiles. The very first topic that we're gonna cover is respiratory disease and respiratory infection in reptiles. And we found five videos that we've chosen specifically because of popularity or because of who's presented it or simply because of the information presented in it. Respiratory disease and respiratory infections specifically in pet reptiles are actually really common. Keepers will normally talk about animals that they've had that have expressed some sort of respiratory disease. It's one of the easier things to notice that's going on with your pet reptile. To further define it, we're gonna jump directly to the Merck Veterinary Manual. This is something that's been around since 1955 and veterinarians actually use it while they're going to school. Specifically regarding respiratory infection in snakes, and if you search for that term, you'll find this exact article. I'll include a link in the description below. That section reads, respiratory infections are common. The incidence can be influenced by respiratory or systemic parasitism, unfavorable environmental temperatures or humidity, insufficient ventilation, unsanitary conditions, concurrent disease, and malnutrition. Treatment consists of improving husbandry and initiating systemic antibiotics after the collection of diagnostic material. Specifically, that last section I want you to keep in mind while we're reviewing the different videos that we're gonna go through. It said the collection of diagnostic material. Diagnostic material in the case of, of animals, of course, and that includes reptiles, would be something like a sample of the, the, what they're producing, whether that be mucus or phlegm or, or, or some biological material. It could also be collection of blood so that they could test for different diseases that way, although that's not very common. It could also include stool samples. Any of this material could be beneficial in finding out exactly what is going on with that animal. Within the scope of respiratory disease and respiratory infection, the most obvious one would be to collect some of the material being produced. Vets can then use that to start a bacterial culture, and that literally means that they're going to grow some of the bacteria that is present in the snake on a, a sample plate. That will be used to identify exactly what bacteria is affecting that animal. Targeted antibiotics can then wipe out the infection. If it's not a bacteria that's targeting that animal, it would be viral in nature. And the way that those are normally detected is through what's called a PCR test. That's exactly what they mean when they say collection of diagnostic material is either collecting something to culture for a bacteria or collecting something that can be used with PCR testing. We've defined respiratory infection, what it's usually caused by and how it's normally treated through an authoritative source of veterinary medicine. Let's go ahead and jump right into the videos. The very first one comes from Snake Discovery and it's titled Identifying Upper Respiratory Infections in Snakes. In this video, Emily talks about how she identifies possible respiratory disease that could be respiratory infections in her animals, takes them to the vet, and treats them with antibiotics. This completely aligns with what we've read from the Merck Veterinary Manual. It's not included in the video, but on a side note, when contacting Snake Discovery, and when they were asked about how they identify things like viral infections, they actually name dropped vet DNA for PCR testing. Would have been nice to see it in the video, but just the fact that Emily has pretty much nailed everything identified by veterinary practice is great. Number two on the list is gonna come from Clint's Reptiles. The video that we're covering is titled Respiratory Infection, How to Save Your Snake. In this video, Clint presents a carpet python that he had that started to express respiratory distress, respiratory disease. He took that animal to the vet. It, we, they were prescribed Batril, and uh, Clint specifically talks about how he treated it with Batril through an oral application. This part, I'm, this, it, I may have some outdated information, but as far as I was ever told that when you treat a reptile specifically, we don't have a good way to judge how much drug we are delivering because of the way that snake's physiology works. We don't know how much they metabolize and we don't know if we're giving them too much or too little of something like Batril. In Clint's video, he didn't have a problem. The snake responded great to the antibiotic treatment and it cleared up the respiratory infection that the snake had. So just as a quick recap, we've talked about snake discovery and the way that Emily identifies respiratory disease, respiratory infections, and how she treats them in her collection. And it all completely aligned with the information that we saw from the Merck Veterinary Manual. 
We jumped over to number two in the list from Clint's Reptiles, where he described treating respiratory disease in his carpet python. And once again, it aligned completely with the information that we've seen inside of the, the veterinary manual. And now we're gonna jump over to number three. This one comes from Go Herping and is titled, Why Vets Couldn't Cure This Ball Python's Respiratory Infection. In the video, Alex describes how he identified some respiratory disease in a ball python, took that to the vet, they prescribed some antibiotics, it didn't seem to respond, and it seems like he repeated this several different times, possibly with different antibiotics. A little spoiler to the video is that it seems like the respiratory distress that the animal was under was caused by contaminants in the environment, which Alex directly contributes to cat urine. I would say that the frustration that, that, that Alex expressed is definitely warranted when you have an animal and you're trying to help it and everything you're doing isn't working. You're paying money to go to the veterinarian. You can't quite sort out what's going on. I understand the frustration, but I don't really think it was up to the veterinarians to determine that the enclosure that that animal was in was covered in cat pee. So some of the disdain that you see in the video, I don't really think was too warranted. I think those vets did everything that they were trying to do to help him and his snake out. But ultimately, when you get an enclosure, I don't care if that's off the side of the road. I don't care if that's from the pet store. I don't care if that's along with an animal that you're rescuing. You should clean that enclosure. If you have an animal that has respiratory infection symptoms and is not responding to any of the treatments you're getting, it might be beneficial to move that animal into a temporary quarantine. If that had happened here, you might have seen a completely different video from Go Herping. But either way, everybody make mis makes mistakes. Sometimes things like this happen, and we know that Alex did what he was what he should have done, what we know from the first two videos that we talked about, as well as the veterinary manual, that the animal was taken to the vet. We're not entirely sure if any diagnostic samples were, were taken or not. Uh, they don't, he doesn't really go over that in the video, but we do know that it was ultimately treated for respiratory infection by the use of antibiotics, and it was actually attributed to contaminants in the environment. A little weird, but it does align with what we've read about respiratory infections in the Merck Veterinary Manual. Number four, as mentioned, is a little bonkers, so bear with me. This comes from Liam Sinclair of Reptiles and Research and is titled The Importance of UVB in Preventing Snake Respiratory Infections. Now, before you even press play on the video, the actual summary of the video begins with, and this is directly from the summary, some of the issues we see in captive snakes are viral infections like respiratory issues or bacterial issues like mouth rot or scale rot. I'm gonna stop reading there. So right off the bat, Liam is equating anything that's a respiratory issue or respiratory disease with viruses. This doesn't align with anything that we've covered so far. Now there definitely are viruses that can cause respiratory disease in snakes. Ball python nidovirus is certainly one. Within the video itself, Liam, however, doesn't actually cover anything like a ball python nidovirus. In fact, he, he mentions that respiratory infections are more like winter colds in humans. Now, winter colds in humans are caused by a number of different viruses that we can recover from. Reptiles experiencing respiratory disease that are caused by a virus do not recover from these viruses these viruses remain with those animals for the rest of their life. The connection between these temporary winter colds in a human and a reptile just doesn't really make any sense. Now, Liam contributes the pervasiveness of winter colds specifically to vitamin D deficiencies, and that's how he makes the link over to UVB. There isn't actually any indication that vitamin D would actually prevent something like nidovirus from being transferred between animals. There is some studies that have been performed specifically by places like the National Institute of Healthcare Excellence, I think it is, that's over on Liam's side of the pond. Additional vitamin D were provided to the subjects in the study, and there did seem to be some sort of link between the overall number and duration of effects of respiratory infections. This has been repeated with other things, including bacteria like tuberculosis. And all of this is online. It's, it's very interesting to read. However, there is no indication that this is going to stop, prevent, or reduce the duration of viruses 
inside pet snakes. This is something that is a, a wildly reaching conclusion that doesn't really correlate to the topic of respiratory infections in snakes at all. Liam further mentions specifically COVID-19 in humans, and at this point in time, it's just kind of tacky. Last year, we had plenty of news articles out there that was telling us that we were no longer going to have to worry about the COVID-19 virus anymore because the sun was going to come out and eradicate it from the earth. That clearly did not happen. We had politicians suggesting to inject light and heat and all sorts of silly stuff, and we still have this virus, people are still suffering from this virus, and there are people still dying of this virus. It seems a little tacky and a little ridiculous to suggest that you know how to cure it with an Arcadia lamp. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Winter colds, and by all means, go do your own research, look this up online, whatever you need to do. Winter colds are normally attributed to the amount of density that we have during the winter. That is, we're all inside with a little bit less ventilation than we normally have, and the humidity, because it's being removed from the air by things like heaters, of course, uh, is very low. That reduction in humidity reduces the effectiveness of the mechanisms inside of our respiratory tract that would normally eject items like contaminants, bacteria, and even viruses. The link to vitamin D is particularly weak, and there's not a whole lot of information that says that this would actually protect you from any sort of bacteria or virus on the train during your commute to work in the middle of the winter. When you watch this video, it becomes very apparent that the research, and I put that in huge quotes, that was done by Liam, specifically when it comes to UVB's interaction with respiratory infections in reptiles, looks like it was all started with UVB and then everything else was hung on it in an effort to dress it up only with what somebody wanted to be true. The conclusions made by this video are completely crazy. Now, Liam specifically will go online and say that he has veterinarians pretty much on dial that he can ask questions to. He'll go to forums like Advance Herb Husbandry and over to the Reptile Lighting Forum over on Facebook. And he ha is surrounded by people that apparently have supported this video. I question if any of these individuals have ever had to treat a respiratory infection inside of any of the animals inside their, their collection because none of this lines up with any of the information that we've seen from any other presenter or anything inside of a veterinary manual. Either these people are blindly supporting what Liam's saying about COVID-19 and specifically the disinformation involved there, or they're simply not veterinarians, or they don't have the experience of actually dealing with a respiratory infection in an animal. The entire video was completely based on something that was not correct whatsoever and then continued to build conclusions on that that made it even worse. This is absolutely the craziest video on respiratory infections that you can probably find. Even somebody trying to treat a respiratory infection with a teapot would make more sense than what Liam made when he released this video. With the entire context of the video being specifically on viruses being the cause of respiratory infections, Liam never actually mentioned any of the viruses we've isolated that cause respiratory disease. Whether it's OPMV, nidovirus, or any of the, the collection of viruses that we have been able to isolate, none of these are particularly treatable. Specifically in the case of OPMV and nidovirus, you'll find out that those are generally accompanied by secondary infections of, from bacteria. So once again, even if there was a virus that was transferred to these animals that was causing respiratory disease, the treatment would still be a round of antibiotics to remove any of the secondary infections. Not a UVB lamp. On a side note, what's kind of interesting is that if you read through some of the literature from places like Fish Head Labs, specifically Fish Head Labs, they actually kind of waved a UV lamp above a clutch of eggs. Now, a uh, UV lamp can be in the proximity of eggs much closer than it can be to uh, an animal. The reason for this was they were trying to disrupt any of the virus that might be on the surface of the eggs. The conclusion to that wasn't really that UV light could kill the virus or stop the virus, 
But ultimately, the conclusion made was that the virus can't be transferred vertically anyway, so that experiment didn't really have a, a, a lot of positive reason for it. But in the case of Liam's, Liam's strange obsession with UV light, this might have been a, a pretty neat little piece of trivia to include in this video. But the video wasn't actually about viruses that cause respiratory disease in snakes, which you can see, it's completely transparent. Craziest video on respiratory infections you can possibly find. Moving on to number five, since number four surely gave everybody a headache. Number five, I would say is a little strange. If anybody can help explain this one, I think it would be just great. The video that we found did not actually have a title of respiratory infection or treatment for respiratory infection. It was something along the lines of angry snake has eggs and it's from New England reptile distributors. Now, regardless of what you think of Kevin, uh, and I'm sure Kevin cares absolutely not at all what I think of him, uh, this was presented as what somebody in a position like Kevin's where he's breeding a lot of snakes inside of a high density collection and doing it successfully for decades now, uh, this is a place that we can find information and, and be able to learn from it. Specifically in the video, Kevin mentions that his retics that are coming off of a cooling period and preparing for breeding have had their immune system somewhat suppressed and that's how they ended up with respiratory disease. He's identified an excess of phlegm that was present on the windows of the enclosure that they're in and he plans to treat it. The way that he says he's gonna treat it is with metronidazole. Now, normally diseases that metronidazole is used to treat are on one end of the snake and respiratory disease is on the opposite end of the snake. In the video, uh, Kevin says that he's doing this to treat any sort of protozoa inside of the animal's gut so that their immune system can take care of the respiratory infection and explicitly identifies Pseudomonas as the reason for the infection. Now, I, d I definitely need some help with this. Uh, I'm not a veterinarian. As far as I know, metronidazole is not supposed to be used with things like Pseudomonas because if you do not treat with the exact amount of the necessary amount of metronidazole, you will actually make Pseudomonas bacteria resistant to metronidazole. Metronidazole is not generally used as an antibiotic that much anymore, but it is specifically used to treat infections caused by protozoa, both in humans. Also, if you ever have a dog that has a bit of the runs, they might be treated with something like a metronidazole to remove any sort of waterborne protozoa. I don't understand the process behind using metronidazole to treat a respiratory infection in these retics. Uh, again, obviously, Kevin has been doing this for decades and uh, has been successful with it. I, I, I personally just do not understand it. However, the important thing here is to see that Kevin has identified respiratory infection with a bacteria and mentions it specifically Pseudomonas, which aligns with all of the other videos that we've already covered except for Liam's. So that's four out of five videos that we've covered that have aligned explicitly with what the veterinary manual said with Liam's video just being him running naked and screaming into a cornfield, the opposite direction of any of the other content creators, any of the other videos, any of the guidance that we've already covered. Crazy video, crazy video. But back to video number five. So if anybody has any, any sort of insight on why you would use something like a metronidazole to treat a respiratory infection, I, I'd absolutely love to hear it. Drop it in the comments, let me know. This could be simply because I am just not familiar with this treatment. We already discussed something where I wasn't 100% sure exactly what was going on when we talked about Clint using Batril orally for a snake. Batril is an example of something that has had kind of not a great history with reptiles. It was used quite a lot, but then it was found out that reptiles were having reactions to it, specifically when used in injections. There is a whole lot of nightmare fuel out there if you want to see what Batril does to reptiles when giving, given via an injection. 
This could simply be a case of my own ignorance on not understanding why metronidazole was used specifically. I, I don't understand if there was a veterinarian involved in the treatment and in the diagnostic that this was caused by Pseudomonas or that there was something that would indicate that metronidazole would be more effective. I don't know if Kevin simply got a lot of metronidazole from a local feed store and has started treating his snakes. I just, I, I don't know. So that concludes our review of five videos specifically on respiratory infections. If you want to drill into some of the topics more, I'll gladly do a video on ball python nidovirus. If you want to talk more about ultraviolet light when it comes to snakes and whether or not UVB is the kind of cure that people like Liam Sinclair suggested it could be, let me know in the comments below.